In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom. Now and ever to the age of all ages, amen. Welcome back, everyone. We missed you. I hope you're enjoying the blessed fast of the Holy Virgin, St. Mary, which started a couple days ago, and God willing, um, as, as usual, we'll conclude on the 22nd of August. Um, and in between, as you know, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Transfiguration on the 19th. Um, <clears throat> this is the last full month, uh, complete month of the Coptic calendar um, of 30 days. Um, and then the last month, we call it the little month because it's either five or six days, depending on if it's a leap year or not. Um, so in this month, because it's the last year, uh, sorry, the last month of, of full month of the year. Um, we uh, we discuss the theme of preparation for the end, preparation for the new beginning, preparation for the end of our life, preparation for the kingdom of heaven, right? And the main theme of preparation is repentance. So. Um, these are the four Sundays in each of the Gospels. If you followed along for the Gospel of today, we're in the first Sunday in which the Lord gives the parable of the vineyard. And actually, there's many different um, parables or stories in the Old and New Testament that relate to this vineyard. We'll talk about it a little bit. Um, but the idea here is um, the people who were responsible for preparing or for doing the work in the vine vineyard, treated the owner improperly, and they were not prepared, and they insulted the son, and they killed him, and they insulted all the other um, representatives that the owner sent, and finally, they were condemned, right? <clears throat> That's the sad ending, but um, if we're prepared, we won't have that ending, okay? Um, so, uh, and the other weeks, as we'll see, God willing, fall along the same um, theme. The church ties in the daily life with the spiritual life, right? And um, now that we're winding down um, the year, um, even in the academic year, so to speak, we're preparing for the, the new one. Um, and how do we prepare? By making sure we don't make the same mistakes that we did in the last year as best as we can. Um, <clears throat> so um, this is the parable of the workers in the vineyard. And here are the three different uh, uh, passages from the three gospels uh, about this. Um, and as usual, the three evangelists, St. Mark, St. Matthew, and St. Luke, um, say the same story, but they have different details, which are important. Um, and so this is one of the last um, different uh, parables that the Lord gave before his crucifixion, um, shortly after Palm Sunday. Uh, and <clears throat> he directs it um, most likely to the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, those who are living in hypocrisy. And they got the message so loud and clear that they wanted to kill him. Um, but they were afraid, so they didn't kill him immediately. They, they, um, they made arrangements for that to happen a few days later. So again, there's a lot of different messages we can get from the gospel of today. But when it comes to our preparation, um, we, need, we need to repent. And it, again, this parable can get pretty confusing when you compare, like there's a lot of symbolism. And when you read one parable, um, the symbolism is clear, but sometimes uh, the Lord uses the same uh, story to mean different things or to have different symbols for this. Because some people say, well, who is the vine dresser? Well, actually there's more than one answer. Um, uh, what is the vineyard? There's actually more than one answer. Um, but the obvious one, as, as we'll see, is the, the vine dresser, of course, is, is God. As the Lord Jesus Christ said, um, my father is the vine dresser, the one who takes care of the vineyard. <clears throat> um, and uh, God, here the point is, God is taking care of us um, more than we know and more than what we could see. Um, if you go to the Gospel of St. Matthew or St. Mark, we read from St. Luke today, um, it, it describes what the, the owner of the vineyard did. Um, he 
uh, set a hedge around it. He dug a wine press. He built a tower, very similar to the prophecy in the book of Isaiah. Right? Um, and so St. John Chrysostom says God's providence was at work toward them from the outset. So God is always wishing the best for us and doing the best for us from the beginning, even before we were born. Right? Um, and so much like in the story, the owner did more than what he should have. He should have let the workers do um, some or most of the work. But here, St. John Chrysostom says he himself did the work the tenant should have done. Right? He planted the vineyard, he set a hedge, he dug a wine press in it and built a tower. He, lift, he left little for them to do. God leaves little for us to do, even in our own life. Right? All we have to do is take care of what was there and to preserve what was given to us. Right? So sometimes we think that God is asking a lot from us. Um, and um, that he, he does not only just meet us halfway, he meets us more than halfway. Um, oftentimes in our relationships, we expect others to meet us halfway or even more than halfway. Right? So we expect more from, from, from God, more from others. But um, in, in reality, we're not oftentimes, you know, I speak for myself first, we don't do enough is what we should. Um, so the bigger person is one who goes halfway and more. Um, and this parable is the perfect example of that. He, he, God was being, or the owner and the vine dresser was being patient and long suffering with those who didn't understand, those who didn't deserve, those who didn't respect him or his family or his vineyard or his love or his power or his authority. And they were foolish and they were blind. Um, and they got, unfortunately, what they deserved at the end. Hopefully, um, that's not what happens to us. Um, so we need to be more like God. We need to be long-suffering, patient, uh, enduring with others, forgiving, working hard. Um, as the Lord says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. So God is saying, uh, yes, um, you need to offer a sacrifice of love, sacrifice of praise. But the idea is when you do that or by doing that, you, you ask for mercy from God. And when you ask for mercy from God and receive mercy from God, you become merciful yourself, right? So this is a process. It starts with sacrifice, but it ends with becoming like God who is merciful and long suffering, right? So that's why the Lord says, understand what this means. <laughs> I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Um, so God wants us to be like him. He doesn't just want us to offer things, but by offering, we, we learn how much he offers himself. Um, so if, if we go back to the parable uh, uh, again, or, or the prophecy of Isaiah, I think we've discussed this before, but I'll, I'll just um, touch on some points briefly. And in chapter five, he says, let, let me sing to my well-beloved um, a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. So here, the, like, this is the hill of God, right? Um, it's very fruitful. One of the most important things, if you ask people who grow grapes, is the location. The location of where to put. It has to be on a high place. It has to be on hilly ground. Um, there has to be a lot of sunlight. Um, and And there has to be water, but it can't be stagnant. It has to um, go down the hillside for, for it to be fruitful. Um, <clears throat> so God chose the best place for his church. He chose you for, for him to dwell in, right? He, he cleaned it. He dug it up. He cleared out its stones. He planted the best, the best vine, right? Christ. He put Christ in our midst, right? He, he, uh, Christ came down um, and, and took our form. He built a tower protection and, and made a wine press. This is the symbol of the cross, as we'll see. So because God did everything, he expects fruit, right? Um, and even, but it didn't. Like in the beginning, after the creation, right? At creating Adam and Eve. And for thousands of years, he expressed, okay, this, this has to be my people, the good, good people. Um, but it, it didn't bring forth good fruit right? It was wild and crazy. Um, and so the Lord is saying, well, what more could have been done? Actually, he answers that by sending his son and, and, and the crucifixion of the Lord and the sending of the Holy Spirit. After that, God says, you know, what more can, can I do for you? 
um, that I have not done. So this is where we kind of answer and say, I, nothing, you, you, God, you, you're, you've done everything. Um, um, and so, <clears throat> um, yes, this is a hard thing to, to respond, but sometimes when we're in the position of getting angry or disappointed or upset at God, um, oftentimes the answer is, I'm doing everything I can. You just need to respond maybe a little bit better, right? And so... Um, <clears throat> So we say, okay, God is the true vine dresser. He's the, he's the perfect um, husbandman, if we use the Old Testament uh, uh, lingo, um, which, which has a, a, a nice flavor to it because not only is he in charge, but he is, he is the bridegroom. Um, <clears throat> so in the Psalm of today, um, we, we ask in Psalm 79 in the Septuagint or Psalm 80 in, in the New King James, it says, return, we beseech you, O God of hosts look down from heaven and see and visit this vine and the vineyard which your right hand has planted so again we're saying god you are the vine dresser you are the owner and come and visit us you, you started the work and we need you to continue the work right <clears throat> um and uh like i said sometimes in the old testament the the vineyard was a symbol of, of the Jews or the people who were wicked or evil. Um, and so God uh, punishes, you know, that, that wicked vineyard, right? And sometimes, though, in, in the New Testament, it some, means something deeper. It it's symbolizes here the church, right? Or the temple of God, or even the heart of the believer. Um, or even we say, um, who's the true vine? Christ is the true vine, right? The church is God's field, right? Where did the true vine come from? Um, we say the, the Holy Virgin Mary. So maybe this is one reason why this, um, this gospel uh, happens in, in the beginning of the, the fast of the Holy Virgin. But if we're trying to be a temple of God, right? The perfect example uh, of, of the humanity that offered the best temple for God to dwell in is the Holy Virgin Mary. He dwelt in her for nine full months, um, and no one can compare to her uh, holiness and virtue, at least from, um, from all of humanity. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this encourages us to be more like this vineyard. We ask God, come visit me. Uh, you, you created me, you um, healed me, you saved me, but I still need you to come and visit um, this vineyard which your right hand has planted. And even there's hymns, um, that the church, uh, I think the aspasmos or the greeting hymn that we say in um, the beginning of the new year. Actually, we don't say it at this time, but that psalm that we just read, um, part of it is uh, sung or chanted um, in the divine liturgy of the faithful after the reconciliation prayer um, in the tune of Rejoice, O Mary. So now we sing Rejoice, O Mary, but in September, we change the words be because it's a, a new time of, of season, um, and we use the Psalm 79, uh, verse 15. Um, <clears throat> so that's the vineyard. Uh, and what's the fruit? Well, if we're the vineyard, we have to bear fruit. The fruit is worthy, uh, is like the Lord says, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Um, and he's looking for the fruit. Like in one of the parables, he says, for three years, I've come seeking fruit. Um, it's not just three years, but we could say for, the, for my whole life, God has been looking for fruit. Um, on, on, and, and he's patient and he's long suffering and he's working with us to bear this good fruit. Um, and uh, St. Augustine says, um, even when you look at the, the parable of the vineyard, okay, it's not doing good. So you have two options. You either destroy the whole thing and plant another, or you fix, right? So here St. Augustine is saying, God chose to fix. He didn't replace all of mankind, kind of like what he did after the flood. He said he wouldn't do that anymore. But instead, he said, I I'm going to fix um, this creation by sending my perfect one, the, the only begotten Son of God. So Christ did not plant another by his coming. He changed that one into a better vineyard. So don't say, God, um, kill me and start me and re remake me again so that I could be good. So you know, like, that doesn't make any sense, right? But, okay, change me from the inside. 
that make me better so that I could bear fruit. Um, uh, so we, in a sense, we, we hit the restart button, um, but that doesn't mean we have to change our, our whole uh, life. Um, we change our whole life from the inside, but not necessarily from, from the outside. I, I don't want to, sorry, I might be confusing some people with, with that point, but the idea is that he wants to enter into our life as it is now. And if there's any sin, if there's anything that we're doing drastically wrong, yes, we ask him to, to help us change that. But he's not going to, he's going to make a new heart from the inside, but not a, a new person from the out. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> um, that's the fruit we talked about the vineyard we talked about the true vine um actually we didn't here's the true vine right the true as the lord jesus christ says in the gospel of saint john i am the true vine well didn't we say the vineyard is the church yes but just like any vine that needs to grow um straight has to be attached to something very strong and very straight usually we put a pole or something but here we attach ourselves to christ because he is the perfect one um, every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. This is after, um, after we depart from this world. Those who, who, who didn't bear fruit, they will be cast into the fire, unfortunately. Right? Those who do, um, in this world, he will prune that it will bear more fruit. And we'll talk about that in a second. But the point here is we have to realize that God is in charge of all things. Not only is he the vine dresser, he's the true vine. He doesn't leave us without any help, without an excuse. Um, he says, um, how are you going to bear fruit? From me. Um, what are you going to bear? You're going to bear the things of my spirit. Um, we are the ones who mess it up. He is the one who makes it fr fruitful. Um, sometimes we don't realize or remember that our life in, in, in its entirety belongs to God. Um, he purchased us with his blood right? It, it's no longer we that live, but Christ who lives in us. He is the vine. He is the vine dresser. He gives the increase. He is my all in all. He should be my focus. He should be my number one priority. The first thing I think about, uh, or sp first one I speak to in the, in the morning, the last one that I speak to um, at night. Um, and the, the Christian is called um, to do this, um, and every now and then we just need a reminder. And at the end of the year, um, this is a reminder that, that, uh, to, to set our priorities um, on him, right? So uh, we just have three last points and, and we'll, we'll make it a little brief today. But the first point, if, if I want to bear fruit, I have to be attached, like I said, to him, right? The true vine. Um, and uh, as the new plant needs to be attached to the strong, the straight pole, um, we need to hold fast to our Savior. Um, and St. Cyril of Alexandria um, beautifully explains this. He says, he, God, wants to show us how important it is to love, to hold fast to our love toward him, and how much we gain from our union with him. Uh, he's talking about this parable. This is why he says that he is the vine. Right? Because he wants us to be connected. If, if something or one branch is separated from the, from, from the root, what happens? It doesn't bear fruit. It dies. It withers. Right? Hopefully, um, that doesn't happen to, to any of us. But even if it does, um, when we wake up, we reattach ourselves to him. Um, the, we're grafted in. Right? That's what happened, a symbol of the Jews and the Gentiles. Um, where the Gentiles were not originally part of the vine, but they were grafted in, right? And they bore fruit. Whereas the ones who were originally part didn't respond properly um, as, as a whole. And so they didn't bear fruit and they were cut off, right? So St. Cyril says, those united, anchored, and rooted in him who are already partakers of his nature through participation in the Holy Spirit, meaning we partake of the Holy Communion, we become like God, right? We are the branches. As he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He says, um, though, so he, here, sorry, that's, uh, but he continues this by saying, for it is the Holy Spirit who has united us with the Savior, Jesus Christ, since connection with the vine produces a good things that belong to it. So obviously we have to hold fast to God every day, not just on Sunday, 
every moment as best as we can, not just the beginning. But th the idea here is the more we have the beginning right, usually the more we continue on. So if I start my day right, then usually the rest of the day is, is on track. Right? If I start my year right, <laughs> usually the rest of the year as much is on track. We need reminders along the way. If I start my week right on Sunday, hopefully the rest of the So we start with what's begin what, what starts, right? We start with the beginning and we modify as we go. Um, and if things are off track, every year we reset and go back to how straight is it, right? Um, so this is what produces fruit, as St. Cyril says. Um, and the second point, so after holding fast, we have to hold fast to the, to the true vine. The second thing is we have to be willing to be pruned. Um, and this is a hard thing to accept. Um, uh, but the Lord says, what every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Everything that's not good in my life, or that's not beneficial for my spirituality, or that's not... Um, helping me should be cast off, right? And everything that is good um, has to be cut and trimmed a little bit. <laughs> Why? So that I could bear more fruit. God wants more fruit, right? Even if it means for me to, to work a little harder, to suffer a little more, it's okay, right? So St. Justin Martyr, um, he talks about this, about the Christians who suffer, right? He says, though beheaded and crucified and thrown to all beasts and chains and fire, they had a lot of suffering, especially in the early church with the martyrs and the confessors. He says, even though all these things happen and, and other torture, we don't give up our confession. We don't deny the faith, right? And he says, on top of that, the more such things happen to us, and we see this in the history of the church, especially the martyrs, the more others, and in large numbers, become faithful and worshipers of God. So if I'm suffering and enduring the suffering and rejoicing with God and others see that, they glorify God and they become good, faithful worshipers of God as well. Um, and so this is what should happen. So if you look at the stories of the martyrs, what happens in their story before they, um, they uh, attain the crown of life? Their testimony, their faithfulness encouraged others to believe, even the ones who are persecuting them. This is a tall order for us, but it's encouraging for us to see this so that when we are suffering, we say, okay, maybe God um, has a plan. Maybe he will definitely comfort me and give me strength. But who knows, may, maybe if I'm doing the right job and just following and enduring the pruning, um, it will bear more fruit. Maybe God wants to use my example for others to trust in him and to believe in him. Um, and this is why sometimes when we do suffer, Others who are not believers um, are, are witnessing. So it's a test of, of uh, I, what am I going to do with this? Of course, sometimes it's not encouraging when people um, are in the midst of suffering and say it's maybe someone else might believe. That's the last thing on our mind is to help someone else believe because sometimes we, we, our faith gets shaken a little bit when, when things are really tough. But we shouldn't lose hope and we trust in the vine dresser who knows what he's doing with his, his choice vine. Um, <clears throat> and so St. Justin continues, he says, for just as if one should cut away the fruit bearing parts of a vine, it grows up again and yields other branches flourishing and fruitful. This is the, when, when the Lord Jesus Christ says, um, uh, he prunes that it may bear more fruit, right? Even so the same thing happens with us for the vine planted by God and Christ, the savior, is his people. So here he's saying, we are the vineyard. Um, and uh, so that's, so don't be upset at the vine dresser for pruning you. Uh, it has to be done. Uh, he has to prune us somehow, because what happens if it's not pruned, if, if you're a good at gardening, I'm not. But if you are, like, what's going to happen? It, it's not going to grow properly, or it, it might not grow well at all. Um, and um, also, uh, according to some of the expert vine dressers, right, they say we prune for the best um, to bear fruit. If you don't prune, you might just have, like the fig tree that was cursed, a bunch of leaves and no fruit. So you have to cut off the parts that are not going to bear fruit or not bear much fruit so that you focus the energy and um, the nutrients and the growth in, into the right path and that will bear more fruit. 
right? Um, <clears throat> so sometimes God wants to focus your life on a few things, not many. And so we have to cut off the extraneous stuff um, uh, as much as we can. And, and then we can uh, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Um, and this is why the wine press, if you look at the parable, um, the wine press is in the center. And this is the, the symbol of suffering or the cross. His blood is the wine of love, right? That goes deep into the heart of the believer. Um, and we carry our crosses and, and bear fruit. Uh, likewise. So um, this is, again, not the easiest thing to accept, um, but um, when we are humble enough to accept this and to endure, um, we see the fruit later on. Um, okay, the last point is um, we can't be all over the place. <laughs> if, if you, again, the same idea is when a vine it has to be tied to, right, something straight, number one. Number two, it has to be pruned. And number three, it has to grow in a direction, right, for, for it to, to bear fruit. Same thing with us. Um, we have to focus our areas, so, I mean, certain areas in our life and ignore certain th things that are fruitless. Um, that might not have a purpose um, regarding sin or just uh, emptiness, right? So, um, <clears throat> so St. Anthony, in one of the stories in the Paradise of the Fathers, he um, was contemplating on why God does certain things, right? And so he was saying, um, Lord, how come it is that some people die young while others live to really old age? And how come some people are poor and others are rich? How come wicked people or sinful people are, are successful? And why are there some holy people that are poor and in need? Um, so, I, and sometimes we th ask the same things from God. Oh, why? I don't understand. Why did you take this person, you know, when they were young? Or why are you allowing this person who is, who is not doing honest uh, to be so rich, <laughs> right? We think that God has to uh, apply his justice immediately. Um, and so what did St. Anthony hear? He heard a voice and the voice coming from God said, Anthony, uh, keep your attention on yourself. Focus on yourself. Don't be all over the place, even in your thoughts. These things are according to the judgment of God, and it is not to your advantage to know them. Um, so sometimes we don't understand God's wisdom behind everything. Um, but the important part here is focus on you. Um, yes, we're supposed to help others and be concerned for others, but, but we have to make sure our spirituality, our thoughts, our emotions, our life is in the right place. What, what advantage, advantage is it if we gain the whole world and lose our own soul? Um, so we can ask a lot of questions about, God, why are you allowing this pandemic to continue um, sickening and killing so many people? We can say, how come there's so much injustice and racism and poverty in the world? Um, we can ask, why, uh, God, are you allowing so, so many good people to suffer? And a lot of those questions are good questions. But the answer might be the same as, as what the Lord says to St. Anthony. God may reveal some of those answers to us in, in minute form, but the main answer is keep your attention on yourself. Um, the problem is not with God. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's allowing. And um, he, he can bring a lot of good through it that we don't see or that we don't know of. But the important thing is for us not to get distracted. This is what the devil wants. Um, and some of these answers might not be to our advantage to know, like was said to St. Anthony. So we have to be attentive on our thoughts and our feelings and our desires and our emotions and what's taking place in my mind and my heart. That's of utmost importance because I'm the only one who can, um, who can ask God to fix those things or to a attempt to direct those um, straight um, towards the true vine. Um, <clears throat> so these are just um, some points. Um, as the proverb says, keep your heart with all diligence. Um, so 
I can't maybe keep the actions and the thoughts and the words of someone else um, on the straight and narrow, but I have a responsibility to keep my heart with all effort, with all effort, because my whole life depends on it. And my eternity depends on what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling re regarding uh, salvation, regarding eternity, regarding my spiritual life, um, regarding the service and the love towards others. So um, those are the, the three main, I think, takeaway points from today is to make sure you're on um, attached to the true vine and you stay close to God, close to his word, close to his church, close to his body and blood, right? Number two, that you submit yourself to some degree of accepting some of the suffering that um, he allows in your life, but it is for growth, for growth for you and for others. And third, don't get too distracted with all the things uh, over in the world. Don't let your mind go all over the place. Don't let your heart go all over the place, but um, make sure you're on the direction which is up towards the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord give us and grant us um, to be attached to the true vine and to bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold until um, he plucks us off of the tree, um, uh, uh, presses us so that we can bear the sweet uh, smelling of aroma of, the, of Christ. Uh, and glory be to him now and forever to the each other. Do we have any uh, questions or uh, Comments, Buna, did you have any announcements? A lot of the announcements are the same as what we um, have shared with you and will continue to share with you on the, uh, the website, as well as um, in the email that comes out, God willing, every Monday. Um, as you know, the liturgy schedule is pretty much the same. Just register, um, requesting a liturgy uh, for August. Um, online. There's a link in the email. Um, what else am I forgetting? The Feast of the Transfiguration, like I said, is on the 19th, God will, which is a Wednesday. Um, God willing, after the Feast of uh, Transfiguration, we're thinking of bringing back the early liturgies on Wednesday. So uh, we'll have a, a clear, more clear uh, answer for you after that. Um, if uh, thank God the we only have about a month left for the fundraising uh, campaign, um, God bless your hearts and your generosity, um, and uh, thank God we're getting closer and closer to um, to getting the opportunity and the blessing to to build the church. Um, but at the same time, um, we're not forgetting our responsibility uh, to serve uh, and the, those who are in need, um, and we'll be more. A communicative God willing of of how as we said all of the donations uh, except if they're earmarked specifically for a specific um, service or the building um, besides that 10% of everything um, is, is given for the poor and the needy um, and and uh, those around us um, God willing um, in about a half an hour we'll start the Sunday school um, I'll uh, okay, Some, uh, someone is saying not all the links are updated on the website. We'll, we'll take a look at that. I, 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 was, I thought that we had updated them, um, but uh, hopefully, usually what's on the website is the same thing that is in the email. If one doesn't work, check, check the other, and if not, let us know, and we can, uh, especially which, which grade, and we can get to the bottom of it. Um, and again, if you need the password, um, uh, please notify your servant um, or, or me or Abuna uh, Daniel. Um, Abuna, was there anything else that I probably forgot? <laughs> no, it sounds good to me. Okay, thank you, Abuna. Uh, so God willing, um, we'll hopefully to see all of you um, in, in person in one of the liturgies that's coming up. And uh, uh, and God willing, we'll pray for all of this to get back to normal sooner than later. Um, pray for me. God, God willing, we'll see you all soon. Bye. <laughs>